Hey everybody, what is up? My name is Mike and today we'll be doing a tutorial regarding internal storage. And more or less, in this tutorial, we'll, our objective is to take user input and save it onto a file in the internal storage of the Android device. So I guess without further ado, let's do a... Actually, we have to do a quick recap. Uh, if you recall, my buddy Will, he created the Android form and it looks something like this. Five inputs, one save button fairly simple. Um, our job is to take whatever the user types in and save into the file. So now finally, without further ado, let's get started. What you want to do first is to navigate to your RES layout and main.xml file. Now in the file, you want to locate your button XML, which is indicated by a lesson sign and button. What you want to do is add an event. And to add an event, you'd simply type in Android on, on click. And in the quotes, you type in the name of your method that will handle the event, which is the on click event. See? Beautiful. The attribute. You add the attribute. Okay. Anyways, now you want to navigate to your source, your Android Contact Manager, and your Contact Manager Activity.java. Just lost all my breath there. And you want to create the method that you just said. So in our example, it is the save handler. You want to pass it a view, a view, and all right. Looking good, just have to import that view. Okay, so more or less, there are really two things we need to worry about while designing the app. First things first, we have to save the, f or sorry, read the input, and then we have to save it. So I guess we might as well go ahead and create two methods for that. Private, um, I want to return a string, read fields. And then we want to create another one called uh, save to file. All right, looks great. What is, oh, sorry, not, uh, not string, void. And I guess we, nah, we'll keep it as void. Keep things simple. The kiss, print, the kiss principle. Um, let's just return null, just to make things simple. Or to satisfy the compiler. Okay, so let's get started in our read fields. Now, what exactly do we need in it? Or you're probably wondering, how do you read? First things first, let's go into the generate, the gen, generate Java files. The r.java file. Okay, you don't really need to know a lot about this file except that it holds a lot of IDs. And you can see for yourself they're all declared as public final ints and assigned a value. This is automatically generated, as you can see here, auto auto, auto generated file, do not modify. Why did I struggle to say auto? But anyways, that's all you need to know and we'll be re referencing this folder. This file, pardon me. So let's see how we can do that. And let's go by first name. All right, so we get the idea of that, but now what? What we wanna do is create an edit text. And there's a, a method called find view by ID. And for those who don't know, a view is just a control. So like your button, your text fields, stuff like that. And we want to pass it to ID. Beautiful, it doesn't work because we have to import some stuff, I'm pretty sure. View, capital B. User mistake, okay, import text. All right, looking great. So string first name equals um, text. Come on, no, darn you IntelliSense, you failed me. Um, get text, pretty please. All right, two string, and we have two string, and this is how you get one field. But now we need to get multiple fields, so how are we gonna get that working? Simple enough, just a loop. We will create an array, and we will more or less just assign that array with each and every item that we need. So, input ids new int so we have the first name which I must say looks very beautiful let's get the last name 
followed by, uh, what was the order? Phone number. Following that, we have the email. And last but not least, the website. Gotta love IntelliSense. So helpful. Um, all right, so here we go. Kind of indenting it weirdly so you guys can see it. Now what do we want to do? We want to loop through it. So let's use the for each loop and assign it to IDs. We want to grab the ID. However, since we have multiple fields, we need to return one string. And in our case, I guess we will just concatenate it and return and separate it by commas. So essentially kind of thinking of a CSV kind of standpoint. Um, so let's just declare our output message, make it empty. And what, what we want is the text or text field dot. Oh, why am I doing that? I can just copy it here. All right, there it goes. Now we have the text, but we said we were going to separate each value with a comma. So let's just add it at the end right here. plus sign. All right, that looks great. So however the issue is at the very last variable, there's going to be a comma. We don't want that. We want a new line because the context file will contain the different contact on each and every line. So let's just modify our string before returning it. Let's get this substring, start at index zero, and I'll put the message given the length. Um, subtracted by one. So essentially it just removes that last comma up there. We also want, we also stated that we want it on a new line. So let's add that new line. All right, everything looks good. No errors. So let's actually call this method. Looks great. So now we want to work on the saving part. How are we going to save it? Simple. Um, called the save to field, save to file, I believe I called that. And let's pass it the message because that's what we want to write. Okay, so now we have the message. We want to update our method to reflect this change. Looks great. So, first things first, when you want to save something to internal storage, you need to save it to a specific location. In our example, we will just save it into wherever that application folder is. And a very handy way to do that is with a built-in method. I believe we had to import that method, but um, anyways, file path. We want to get the file path. Um, here's the method. It gets the directory that we're working with, where the app is currently working with under the files. So if you need a visual queue or a visual... Um, image of this, it is right here. It will save stuff into this file called files. Anyways, um, it returns a file type, so mismatch. Yeah, so what we want to do is create a two string, and then now we need the actual file name, which in our case will be called contact. Stop failing, Mike. You're in front of everyone. Everyone's watching you. Anyways, um, .txt file. Oh, we could create a CSV file because it is a practically a CSV file, but um, let's keep things simple for those who don't know what a CSV file is, so we just keep it as text. I assume you know what a text file is. Anyways, um, in our example, we will be using the file upward stream in order to save a file. Now, there are a lot of other classes that you can save a file with, but and you are free to explore them, but in our example, that's what we'll be using. File output stream out. I love copy and paste. No, I failed. Darn. Not in front of all these people. Anyways, um, it takes in two parameters, or you, you could give it one, but we will be using two parameters, file path and a Boolean value, which is will, will be true. So before I explain that, let's kind of fix this. Got to import that. Throw an exception. Let's just, let's just for simplicity's sake, let's just throw an exception, a general, general exception. 
Okay, so the first one is pretty much self-explanatory, right? You have to save the file somewhere. And the true indicates appending. Whether you want to append if the file exists, if you want to append or, or put it as false, which will wrap, always recreate a new one. Now, because this is a contact manager app, we want to actually append because our list will go on and on and on forever. Okay, so what's next? Uh, excuse me a bit. Ooh, okay, sorry, I kind of burped there. Um, but anyways, okay, that was another burp. Um, I apologize. Anyways, our the file output stream, if you just grab the IntelliSense, has a write method. Now it has a now it accepts a bunch of stuff, but or there's different uh, overloads for it. But we will be using the first one, which accepts an array of bytes. Now, what are we writing to it? And that's simple, it's our message. But wait, it's a type string, darn it. So what do we do? We use IntelliSense, and luckily for us, there is a method defined called get bytes. So everything works out perfectly like a puzzle. Next, we want to close a file, because it's always important to close a file after you're done. So more or less, this is it. This is, yeah, now this is it. Gotta throw the exception. Um, so anyways, again, this is it. Uh, double check the file folder is empty. Let's actually run this. This screen should refresh. All right, it is looking good. Please don't fail. All right, so here it is. So let's actually type in some data and save. Because there's no um, validation, I'm just gonna type in whatever. All right, so let's save it. Ooh, nice, it didn't crash. But now let's check out the files folder. All right, it was created. So let's actually pull this from the device, save it, and let's actually view it. Um, all right, gotta bring my notepad plus plus over. All right, and that's exactly what we typed in. Beautiful. Now you probably don't believe me and say, "Hey, Mike, you know, let's let's see the appending in action," and I will prove you wrong that it does work. All right, one, two, three. That's the only thing I changed. I'll save it again. I have to pull from the device, and yep, and there you go. That is so beautiful. Even if I do say so myself. So, anyways. This is more or less how you create a file and save it on the internal storage. I um, hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys next time. I hope. How do I close this program? Ah, there it goes.